Unity just wrapped up their Unite 2024 conference, bringing together insiders, game developers and employees to discuss what's next for the Unity game engine. I've gone through the keynote session, roadmap session and everything I've heard during the conference itself and combined it all of this info into a list of 35 new exciting features and capabilities coming to Unity. Let's start with the features you can already experience today or in the next month. First, next version of Unity is ready to be launched and will become public next month on October 17. It introduces stability and performance with reduction of CPU workload up to 50%. This version will also finally allow you to remove the splash screen for free. Next, Unity 6 comes with new rendering capabilities like render graph, new light baking architecture and occlusion culling that reduces overdraw rendering. Fantasy Kingdom, now optimized for Unity 6, will be available also October 17 on Asset Store. It includes mobile phone support. You'll be able to download it and try it yourself on your device. They showed Time Goes Demo, incredible cinematic which you should totally watch yourself. Apparently, it runs on unmodified engine with PC running GeForce 1490. They demoed a few cool tricks like Sentis AI technology to implement real-time costume deformation. You will be able to also download it from the Asset Store and try to run it yourself, assuming your PC can handle it. Unity Awards nominees have been announced. A ton of awesome games, Asset Store developers and content creators, including Cocode in the Best Tutorial Series category. Congratulations to all nominees, now go ahead and vote for your favorites. Help me win the shiny Unity trophy. Moving on, they are refining multiplayer tools. For newcomers, they will now offer a multiplayer center, tool that recommends suggested networking solutions and hosting models. On top of that, it guides you through a setup process and documentation to make the whole process less complex. Also, a built-in widgets will speed up all the boring stuff like lobby, server connection and others. Mega City Metro multiplayer demo project has been updated for Unity 6 and can be downloaded today. You might have seen the news that Unity recently decided to drop their runtime fee policy, opting instead for an increase in the Pro License seed price. In my opinion, this is a step in the right direction and if they follow through on their promises, Unity could be on track to regain the trust of game developers. On top of that, their new CEO has made a strong first impression, which is definitely a positive sign. A few new UI Toolkit demos has been shown, including Dragon Crushers updated for Unity 6. Some new features coming to Unity Cloud Build, mainly releases. You can create a pipeline where your game goes through dev, staging and publication phases and if anything goes wrong, it also allows you to roll back the changes. All with a nice GUI in open beta right now. Unity Level Play, tool that allows to manage and optimize monetization stack in your game. Now integrated into the editor with more ad networks and reporting features. Bring your games to the web. You were able to export to WebGL for a very long time, but now load times have been significantly reduced with the new WebGPU experimental export option. They showed Project Prismatic, which apparently uses the new renderer. It's quite impressive for a browser-based game. New Muse AI features, including Muse Chat directly built in into the editor that can run the scripts for you. You can also add references to the game objects on your scene and tell things like add gravity to this game object. Upscaler is now built into the sprite editor. It takes your small texture and makes it larger to fit your needs. Also, some image tweaking features like background removal are a nice welcome addition. More AI stuff? Muse Texture allows you to import any normal texture and transform it into a seamless one. 
new build profile system that gives you more flexibility on export platforms, including option to have separate player settings for each configuration. I already covered some of its features in this video. Now, all of that will be available in less than a month in Unity 6 on October 17th. But now, let's shift gears and look a bit forward into the future of the engine. Here are some features that have been announced to come next year. Frequent unstable releases? Not anymore. Unity is shifting its approach, spacing out engine updates to focus on stability. This new strategy aims to provide developers with more consistent and reliable tools, ensuring smoother transitions between versions. Unity 6.1 is already in development and is expected to enter beta soon. A stable release is planned for around April 2025. Here are some of its features. Support for foldable and bigger mobile screens. This will use Android API under the hood and is obviously targeted towards the Fold devices like Z Fold. New Mesh LOD system – simple solution to automatically generate different levels of details for the meshes. Unity will also correctly select the proper mesh to use at runtime. New deferred rendering will be optimized also for mobile devices. Some improvements to XR development easier scene setup, new multiplayer template, and new MetaQuest build profile to get started quicker with VR development. Next quick one, support for Facebook Instant Games with ability to upload them straight from the editor and call Facebook JS endpoints directly in c -sharp code. One of the upcoming features is the ability to strip out parts of assemblies to save space and optimize your game. This allows for smaller build sizes and faster loading times. Unity has shared these impressive test results from various games using this feature. Take a look at the results for yourself. All of this is coming in later versions of Unity 6, which we'll get to try out next year. But now let's get to the most exciting part, the future versions of Unity. In the future, they want to focus on simplicity, speed and best performance. Who would have guessed? For now, we are only using this term. The next generation of Unity. So it's uncertain if all of that will come out as Unity 7 or what. UI Toolkit will receive new capabilities like long overdue word space UI, keyframe animation, shaders and more. Hopefully, it will finally become a real solution that will be as future-set as the current UI system. Choices are hard. Instead of free render pipelines, now we will have a unified renderer that combines the power of URP and high-definition render pipeline. Built-in renderer will be marked depreciated, but just in case it will still be available for the years to come. New Shader Graph 2 better interface, next generation of node-based tools, over 20 nodes and ability to create your own shader blocks by combining shader graph and your own code. For those who want to do their work fast, there will be also a couple of built-in shader presets. The latest .NET tech will finally be available in Unity. Core CRL will replace Mono, which will allow you to use features of the latest .NET versions with better performance. Unfortunately, that means that we'll still be using Mono for next few years, development platform that hasn't been updated since 2019. Next up, we'll move away from the whole domain reload to individual assembly reloads. After code changes, you will no longer need to wait for the whole Unity code to recompile. Only your code base will require reloading. It should dramatically improve the development process. Improvements to the content pipeline. Tasks like graphic import, saving prefab and more will be happening in the background without blocking the editor. Here is an example of how it might work when you open your project. Everyone who ever worked on a bigger Unity project knows how tedious it is to wait for every asset import or prefab change, so I'm really looking forward to this tech. 
ECS, a crucial component of DOTS, will now be seamlessly integrated with game objects, allowing for a mixed hierarchy that utilizes both systems. This change, called ECS for All, has generated a lot of excitement among the community. Although I haven't personally worked with DOTS yet, this development further inspires me to dive in and explore its possibilities. New animation system, ability to preview animations in the editor, new skeleton workflow, new remapping system, new graphs, tools and many many more. Exciting stuff for animators. World building gains a lot of procedural features. Rule sets based on values like altitude or slope, shown based on examples of mountains or this island. Also better meshes blending. Finally, virtual texturing that optimizes the performance by reducing the mesh complexity further from the camera. And that's a wrap. Let me know in the comments what you're most excited about. Can't wait to dive in into the future versions of Unity myself. A huge thank you to my amazing Patreon supporters. See you all soon.